Hey, Aaron Slavy here with Integra Spec Home Inspections. I wanted to take a minute and just talk briefly about the differences between radon test equipment. Now, there are two different categories or groups of test equipment that you're likely going to see be used in the real estate industry. And these are passive devices and active devices. A passive device would be your charcoal canister or bag and an active device would be a device like we have here. This is an electronic monitor. And there are big advantages for all parties involved in the real estate transaction to use an active electronic device such as this one here. A couple of these reasons is that with passive devices, there's no tamper detection. So if someone would move or relocate that canister or cover that charcoal device during the test period, no one's ever going to know that the results were altered. So that's one reason that we shouldn't be using passive devices. Another reason is that you're only going to get one average number as your test result in using a passive device. And you may or may not know, but weather such as rain and snow, uh, storms that are inbound or outbound, the operation of the HVAC system or air exchange systems in the home, these are all factors that can significantly alter the results when doing a radon test. And when you use a charcoal canister, you don't have any intelligence to look at the hourly readings to be able to determine if one of those factors has altered the test results. So again, another disadvantage of using charcoal canister for testing. Another disadvantage is that there's a lot of room for error in the result. Now, the external factors that I mentioned and the tamper issues that I mentioned, those are both things that can either drastically spike and raise the average number, or on the flip side of that, drastically show a low result when there's actually an issue. So there's a number of reasons why we want to use an active electronic radon tester when doing radon testing, because it can have impacts for both the buyer and the seller. Now a few other things to note about radon testing is that when testing in Minnesota versus Wisconsin, there are different requirements. Some of these key requirements are things such as foundation types. So let's say the home has a basement and there's an addition which has a crawl space, or maybe the addition was built on slab on grade. Now, because there are multiple foundation types in the home, we are now required to do more than one radon test. We'd actually need to do multiple radon tests. So when you're having your radon test done, be sure that the individual that's doing the test is licensed, they're certified, they understand the best standards for radon testing, and that they take the time to not just walk into the house and set up a radon test, but to actually do their due diligence take a quick look at the house, make sure everything is compliant with the testing procedures so that in the end, you get an accurate, reliable radon result. I hope this was helpful. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about radon testing, uh, standards, procedures, differences, and, and state requirements for Minnesota and Wisconsin. Again, Aaron Slavy with Integraspec Home Inspections. Thanks.